ladies and gentlemen, once again, a very special welcome and a very big thank you to Monty Roberts and Martin Clune. So we're going to come here and have a chat and tell us about their lives together. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed, gentlemen, for coming back once again. I've, I've, it's been a bit hectic, hasn't it, the last couple of hours? <laughs> yeah, it's been yeah, it's been busy. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's worth more usual for you. But, um, uh, they yeah. keep me busy. Yes, yes. Let's just start how you two got together. A lot of people here will be familiar with the Horsepower program. Yeah. The first time we met was in this facility at the Hoys, Horse of the Year show. Yeah. And it was a uh, piece of luck that we sat beside one another and they told me that I was sitting beside Martin Clunes. Well, not being from the UK, I didn't know who Martin Clunes was, and that was my fault. Um, said, I got a message for you. Yeah? This is John Bowles. And I said, I know, I recognize that voice. Well, I have a friend in, Amer in, the, in England called Sir John Miller, and he has a message for you from the Queen. Now this is a big joker guy anyway, you know, and I thought, yeah, right. He says, he would like to come and watch you work with some horses because the Queen is interested in seeing your work. Right, John. And when do you want me to be here? January the 10th. Okay. Now I told my wife, who was fixing lunch for us, there's a joke here somewhere, so you just watch for the other shoe to fall because this guy's got some plan. And he gets out of this big uh, uh, Mercedes with this little man with gray hair, three-piece suit with tweed and perfect white mustache. And I said he rented it from Central <laughs> Casting. <laughs> Central Casting, I know it. He's rented it. There's something up here. Well, it was Sir John Miller, and it really was uh, an invitation after seeing me to come to uh, Windsor Castle in April of uh, 1989, which I did. And Her Majesty was to be with me for one hour on the Monday morning. One hour. And she was with me five days, about six, seven, eight hours a day, and watched everything I did. And to this day, she knows every move I made. She's a very good student of horsemanship. And uh, it started a, a relationship. Tomorrow, I go and work with her babies. At, Hampton. Um, it's been 20 years now, or 21, and uh, I just couldn't be happier with it, and it was a very big thing in my life, uh, one of those times that you will never forget. And I know that you, you felt it was a very, almost a turning point for you in, in, in this part of your career. Of course, it's probably also a turning point meeting Martin, because I know you have a you, you do have great respect for Martin. Let's just talk about the educational aspect of it, because... I'm not on those stamps, though. <laughs> <laughs> or the money. No, actually, no, isn't the, question, isn't the question, have you got the invitation yet? The wedding. Has anyone got the invitation at the wedding yet? Um, the <clears throat> Martin's a good learner, because I know you, you, it's quite serious, this, because it's all very well standing there with someone for two hours teaching them. They may not pick up a, a damn thing. But you've been doing that with Martin, and, and you were saying that he has an affinity, almost, to be able to pick up what you're doing. Yeah, you know, horses can read intent from a mile away. They really can. And that's why children get along oftentimes better with horses than adults do. Because there's no intention to be violent. But they'll read intent. And if a student can read animals, who loves animals, is on a mission to help animals, those animals will be intent. And when Martin goes in there and you ask him to do something, I believe that he's going to do it, and so does the horse. So he gets it done. He will be self-effacing, and he will say, I'm just a beginner, I don't know anything. Yeah, okay. But suddenly he does. And Her Majesty is that kind of student too. She also has good intent. And um, I just had such a, a joy, a good time working. There are a few times that we've worked together, but we're planning to work very soon again. Um, and uh, I think we'll make, we'll make some progress and some headway. Uh, I know that the intent is there to do good for animals. And it's mine too, so that kind of synergy will get you somewhere. 
And the other thing is that we also talk over lunch about you never stop learning. And I've, I've had a request, Monty, that we do have a look at, at just your recent development in terms of headshine horses. We've got a few moments. Would you, would you be prepared to do that again and just talk us through that? Let, sure. me just get, let me just get a horse out for you. Martin, you must find these meetings with Monty absolutely fascinating. I can't believe my luck. No, I just can't believe my luck that, that you know, we have the backup of Monty and, and Kelly with our, well, as we you know, find out about our horses. Yeah. 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 Right. And just whilst the horses coming out, just tell us a little bit about the hand. Is it next week, the hand? Is uh, I'm going to, yes, one of my Saturday. Saturday, next Saturday. Next Saturday. Yeah, we're going more handed. I'm going to take the guide sales. Uh, I don't think Monty necessarily wants them there, but I really want to show them. <laughs> 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 it's two, two babies, isn't it? Is two, right? two yeah, ten month old guides, yeah. Um, and it's, oh, Monty shows are, uh, uh, um, if anybody hasn't been to one, get along to one, you know, he does these tours all the time. They are amazing. And you, you, are you going to ride again? On oh, Saturday? Yes. Oh, the same horse? What's I am. Coffee? I think you're riding too. Oh, am I? You didn't know about that. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's now busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, probably <laughs> bridalist. <laughs> well, you Call mentioned... Bluff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. We'll try. What? Accelerated learning. Yes. Come on. Okay. <laughs> I believe in accelerated learning. Um, don't mess about, you know. Just get on with it. So we're going to have him on a horse at the hand in Cleveland with no bridle on. No, I'm not sure about that yet, but <laughs> we'll have fun. Great, yeah, we, we will. We will have fun. Um, so we have a mayor here. Um, what is her name? Aracel. Carousel. Oh, a carousel horse. And um, your name? Emily. Oh, I have something in common here. Martin's daughter is Emily. So Carousel, let's, let's just say Carousel was head shy. All of you know what head shy is? How do you make a horse head shy? Hit them, twist one ear down to hold them in place, put a twitch around the nose and crank it down till it's painful. The tongs, the nose tong that they put on, bend it around up here and hook it to the head collar and have them stand there in pain while you do something to them. You can make a horse head shy in any of those ways. Horses will protect themselves and they are flight animals, so you can do things like this and you can at least get them to blink. But she's not head shy, is she? But I discovered something very recently, just two or three weeks ago, and that was that we were working on how to extend the stride of a horse. And in, we were in California, and a, 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 the stride, the overreach, if you watch where the hind foot strikes the ground, is in front of where the front foot was. And so the amount of overreach oftentimes tell you, tells you how good an athlete that horse will be, because reaching under with that power plant back there is critical. You can come around and stand right here. So I was working with some people from Kentucky on how to get a horse to get maximum overstride. And one of the five horses that we had on test was extremely head shy. But I mean head shy to the extent that if you did this from here, she would not only just maybe blink, but she would go backwards and flying back with her head in the air, and you couldn't, you couldn't touch her ears at all. You could not do that. You couldn't even put your hand here or here, especially here. You couldn't do it. So we just let that go because we're working on the overstride. But I was showing these young men from Kentucky how to do this from a horse too. Because you get tired doing it from the ground, uh, causing the horse to walk better. You have to walk a long way and you have to do it in such a way that it encourages the horse to stretch out and really walk. So you can do it from horseback really well. And I'm constantly learning. So I was showing them how to do this from horseback. Walk, 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 stop, back up back, 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 walk, 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 stop, back up, like that, with a particular halter on that causes them to stretch out and go. It's called dually halter. And um, we were having great success, and I was showing them how to go. We had one horse that was minus four inch overstride. He was four inches short of making the mark of his front foot. And after three days of training, he was a plus 18 inch overstride. Uh, it was incredible. So 
Now this horse was coming up and back, head shy, but it wanted to keep its head right by my leg. It was really comfortable there, and the, the halter had trained her to be there, and I was sitting talking to these fellows, and I thought, I'll just try to touch her here while I'm up on the horse. Uh-oh, I'm a different animal now. I'm not the guy that abused her from the ground. I'm up on a horse. And suddenly I realized that she took me on as a different animal. I wasn't fearsome as she found people who were standing on the ground. So I started to touch the ears and I could do it. And she was reticent at first. She really, her pulse rate went up, her adrenaline went up, she rolled her eye back, she took a look at me, but she accepted it. And pretty soon I was just loving her all over her head from the horse. And I thought, uh, my students were over here, and I thought to myself, I wonder if I could do it. And I had one of the students come in and put his hands where my hands were and begin to rub and love the horse in places that I was doing it with my hands. Yeah? So I'm sitting on this side on the horse and I begin to migrate away. And I wound up about here like this with the line on and the student was all over her head. And in 15 minutes, she was no longer head shy. The student could wave the arms, everything, and she was okay. And I thought, well, I'm a genius. I got lucky, and I did one in a row. So I called Kelly immediately, and I said, please, Kelly, get on the phone and see if you can find us head shy horses for the tour I'm about to do in England. So we got a head shy horse, and at Kiso on Friday night, just passed, I did the second horse of my entire career by this same method, and they brought us a very head shy mare. The lady could, it took 15 minutes to put the head collar on her in the bo loose box to get her to the, to the building. She was that head shy. And I got on Copy, the horse that I ride, western horse, and rode him. And I did the same thing with her at Kiso. After doing a join up with her, I did the same thing with this mare, and she let me do the same thing. And then I brought Rosie Jones in, who is doing my riding for me, and I put her in the same position that I did the fellow in California. And pretty soon I was here, and Rosie was right where uh, Emily is now, and she was just loving her all over her head. Everything was fine. And then I said, Rosie, unclip the lead. And she unclipped it, dropped it, and I coiled it up. It's a long line. I coiled it up, and I said, now Rosie, just walk away from her. And she walked around away from me, away from the horse. She walked that way, and the mare followed her and put her head right back in her lap, and she was touching her all over her head. So I'm two in a row now. Not one in a row, but now two. And maybe we'll have a head shy at the hand on Saturday night, I don't know. But if we do, I'm gonna try it again, because this is, this is an amazing thing. And you've all seen aggressive people trying to do things with head shy horses by demanding from them in some way or other. Monty, yep. do you think that by that act of being that other animal, being on the horse, and being able to get that access to that or to, to the other ones, that there's other things that could be applied to. Yes, I, I think, I just don't know where it's going to go. Yeah. But can you imagine this? Like Kelly's the one that came up with the electric toothbrush for the clipping, the clippers. Instead of clippers, the electric toothbrush still makes a sound and it vibrates, it's electrical, and you can rub it around as an incremental step to get into the clippers. Well, now I want to try from the horse oh, yeah. to do that. Because I think they may just say, you're okay so long as you're on a horse because nobody's ever hurt me from another horse. And you all know that a head shy horse can go out in the field and play with another horse and their heads come together and they're perfectly fine. So she's not head shy from another horse. So is she head shy from a human being who's on another horse? Well, I'm. I'm only knowledgeable about two horses in my whole career, so there's more to come. But I would love to, as you suggest, Mark, 
I would love to progress by trying all sorts of areas where this dealing from another horse um, happens. I have done long line from another horse, and it's been very effective. Emily, thank you very much indeed. Monty, as everyone here knows exactly who you are and what you've achieved, it's actually very, I think, not just interesting, but very exciting to hear you say that you're still learning and finding out about horses. I mean, that, don't you think that's fantastic and fascinating? <laughs> I, I don't know how fantastic it is. It is fascinating uh, to me because uh, I, I am a, a trained behaviorist, if you will, I have two doctorates in that category. Not that that's ever been a big thing. The horses don't know it, I promise you that. But, but yes, you're not supposed to learn after 20 some years of age or 30 some years of age. But that's not true. You are supposed to continue to learn as long as there's a breath in you. And I, I really feel that there's a lot more I can learn. And I don't want any student to be as good as I am. I want them all to be a lot better. I want progress to happen. I want evolution to happen. I want improvement. Um, my life's goal is to leave the world a better place than I found it for horses and for people too. And Martin, obviously they're becoming under the new announcement about the British Horse Society. Many congratulations for, for that. Everyone will be absolutely delighted. But they're almost overtaking your life. This is going to become quite serious for you. Yes, it is a disease. It is a disease. <laughs> yes. It's incurable, isn't it? Supported by this industry. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it is incurable. But um, I'm so happy about that. The people I've met, I thought, you know, I've spent my life with actors, nothing duller. But, but the people I've met, thank you. Um, don't touch me now. Um, <laughs> since. I've met the horse people since we, you know, I've met Monty, I've met the Queen, I've met, you know, I've met you. Um, I've, I've just uh, constantly meeting people I adore and I'm fascinated by, you know, Clydesdale breeders and stuff. It's broadened my life and brought me in contact with lots of people I, I'd never get the chance to meet, and animals I'd never get the chance to meet. And Monty, people have constantly wanted to meet you, and one of the questions was, we're going to have a little Q&A session in a second for everybody, so please think of any questions you'd like to ask Monty or Martin. Uh, do you have any tours coming up? Is Kelly organising anything for you? Do you want to promote those? We're Come on tour right now. You're on tour, and, and <laughs> what dates? Do you know the dates offhand? The <laughs> Did you hear that? It's intelligenthorsemanship.co.uk. Right. <laughs> Hang the, on a minute. The, this is going to be a lot easier if I do this. <laughs> it's, it's the horse that I spoke of, is that right? Yeah. I'm, I'm doing the promotion here, excuse me, it's my job. Uh, Kelly, on Facebook, Kelly Marks and Intelligent Horsemanship, there's a clip of the horse, that, the, a film clip of the horse that Monty worked with doing the head shine horse. And if you go to intelligenthorsemanship.co.uk, you can see if there's any tickets left for Monty and all Martin's problem horses <laughs> at Somerset uh, on Saturday night. Thank I think you. it's about sold Thank out, but there's a few. Yeah. <laughs> it's not sold out at the hand on Saturday, Kelly was just saying. Well, well, they'll make more seats anyway. Well, gentlemen, are you okay to answer a few questions from the audience? Yeah, sure. Okay, we're going to start... From, oh, hello, we've got a question already. We'll start from this and we'll work our way around. Hang on, I'll come around with the microphone for you. This is Bethany. Bethany from Horse and Rider. Yeah, what's your question? Um, I've got two year old Dales, and a lot of the things you were saying about the head shyness, he's not like that at all. They'll let me cuddle him, fuss him, and everything. But he gets a matter of yards to the field, and he just stops. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't know whether it's because he wants more fuss or more attention. He, he won't go in the field. No, he stops. But from here to where you are, he'll he knows you're going to go away when he goes in the field, you see. He wants to be with you. Do you try to go in the field too? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kelly will tell you that this is such a, a common problem, really. Um, and then he's at the gate to come in at night. And he comes in easy enough. Yeah. So think about it. It's, it's where safety is, it's his territory that he doesn't want to leave. 
it's the dually halter. And that's what the dually halter is made for. I know. Okay, so I told you I can get that stride going with the dually halter. That's only because he's walking freely forward. So you want him to walk freely forward right into the field. So you smile a lot when he stops. Smile and just walk into it and let it shrink. And then when he comes forward one step, it opens up. Don't keep pulling. Let him take the reward and then he'll keep walking. In 10 minutes, you could take away that problem. Bethany, how long does it take to get home? Can you get that sorted out? Oh, yes, madam. What's the name? Monty, I've got a, a stallion that I've bred myself and I've had for 10 years now. And he's one that, uh, he's a very one person horse. He only likes to be dealt with by myself. But it's a bit of a jack and hide in the fact that it can be very confrontational one minute and not do a thing you'll tell him to do. This is the bleeding up or whatever from the ground. And the next minute it's like a puppy. When it's confrontational, it's really hard to deal with and I don't know how to go about it. And obviously people with stallions tend to think they should be beaten or dragged into submission somehow. But he's an intelligent animal and wants to know how to work with him. Yep. to be able to get around that. Yeah, but you say he's a, he's a one person horse. Would he be that way with me too? I thought so, but I've never experienced anybody else really that wants to get near him because when he's like that... But I hear like this him. all the time. I also hear, adding to that, he doesn't like men. He won't do a thing for men. I'm in trouble. But they love me. And they're not one person. They include me. Why? Because I know the language. Learn the language, the rest will take care of itself. You must know the language of the horse. What does that horse need? What's he asking for? How can I be a better shepherd of this relationship? Once you get that down, that will go away. They want to be a partner with you. I can't see what's going on, so I can't speculate as to where the glitch is in that communication. But believe me, if you want to know the problem, look in the mirror. It's your problem, not his problem. He's just a horse. He will only respond to what you do. So he's responding to you the way he thinks is appropriate. It's a glitch in your communication. Education, there's a lot of opportunities now. See Kelly before you go, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities. I have an online university now, and you can go on there, there's 120 lessons up there now, and they're all there, bing, 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 you can go right down, they're archived for you. Uh, you can get it straight up. Thank you, Monty. Oh, loads of questions. Hello. I'm going to say, what's your name? Alicia. Yes. Hi there. Um, I have a 16-year-old Freedian Galdo, and he doesn't like to socialise with other horses. He's, he'll be in a field with other horses, but he won't want to talk to them. If you take all the other horses away from him, he suddenly relaxes and he's happy. And I feel quite sad that he doesn't have much interaction as a horse. Okay, that, that's quite unusual. Because horses are herd animals. And typically they like being with a herd. And so that's a very unusual question. And there aren't very many unusual questions on Earth. So I'm, I'm interested in that. But I, I have to say to you that you cannot train social behavior in horses in the herd. And if that's his need, meet his need. I don't know what you can do to meet that need. I could, could know more about it if I saw your place, but um, that is unusual. Learn the language, observe your horse, try to figure him out. Uh, maybe he wants another animal, maybe a little pony or a donkey. Uh, there's a lot to be, um, what do you say, adopted today. Oh, no. You know? Yeah. And um, believe me, they'll fall in love often with a smaller animal like that. Maybe he's intimidated by other horses his own size or, or larger. RSPCA, the RSPCA have loads, loads yeah. of co people buy miniature Shetlands because they think they're small and be nice in the garden. <laughs> and, they got, and then they abandon them and they've got loads of yeah. them and they're such good fun. Yeah. What? 
I, I did recently actually, going along those lines, um, purchase a, a small Dartmoor Crossbill pony. Oh. Um, and they're out in the field together. Um, and, you know, he accepts her, but he doesn't want to ever interact with her. And then as soon as she goes there, he relaxes. Well, I don't know the answer. I'd, I'd love to be there on your property and see it and try to help you through it. But there's an answer. There is an answer. Monty, what's interesting with this year's horse is it's actually 16 years old, and, and this has only had him for two years. So, of course, there could be some history there that, yeah. that we don't know about. Yeah, he may have been really cornered up by a group of horses and battered at some point in time where he feels like it's time to get off on his own. And maybe maybe retirement is in his best interest. <laughs> Oftentimes I say to people, if you put one of those tapes across a, a little area and give it to him, that pretty soon he's scratching the horse over when he realizes their intent is not to hurt him. And he'll gradually amalgamate himself back into uh, another group. Try a few things like that. Make it a project. MontyRoberts.com, let me know how it's going <laughs> and I'll try to answer you um, to, to help you through it. A question for Martin we've, now. We've got a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes for a couple more questions. So, any questions, please, over that side? How about over that side? There's a lady in red. Um, how do I control my stallion when he's aggressive towards me? Like, if I walk towards his field, he'll charge at me and he'll just want to fight and kick me. How do I stop that and calm him down without being scared? Oh boy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a question for Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Take your advice, at Monty Roberts. <laughs> MontyRoberts.com. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Okay. There's a lot of elements to this question, and they're serious elements. And I am not going to sit here and try to give you advice about handling a stallion that I haven't seen, and who you have identified as being aggressive. Look at yourself. Look in the mirror. You're a precious human being. Something has happened to really irritate this horse toward people if he can be aggressive toward you. You're not in a safe place. For me to try to give you advice from afar would be foolhardy. A. How much have you done in the way of horsemanship before? How long have you been riding? You've been riding since you were three. In competition? Um, I've competed since I was three as well, but uh, I've had a few years where I've stayed at home. Okay, so you're an experienced horse person. That's a good start. Um, because I was about to say, if you're anything but an experienced horse person, you don't belong handling a stallion anyway. I'm not, I'm not fond of recommending a stallion for anybody that's just in it for the love of horses um, and wants to be um, a leisure rider. It's not safe for other people. Stallions have urges that are uncontrollable at times. That's just typical throughout. It would be bad advice to give you to have a stallion for leisure purposes or to be near children or other horses that they could attack instantly. And I've seen it happen. And I was asked to come in on one occasion where Lady, uh, uh, a lady that I worked with lost her life later because she persisted in doing what I told her not to do. I don't want to hear about that from you, uh, please. So please, get help. Um, Kelly is here. Ask her about your way to find help from professionals about a thing like this. And if you don't feel safe, stay away. Get away and get yourself in a safe place. I'm Tim Martin, thank you very much. It's been enlightening and very, very interesting. Thank you so much for coming along today to Beat the National. Ladies and gentlemen, Monty Roberts and Martin Clinton. Thank you.